kids and welcome back to the keys kids channel and i miss keys we are back for another episode in our in between the lines series that's when we deep dive into different books and go in between the lines to search for the theme remember you guys that theme is the message the moral or the lesson the author wanted you to take away from the story he wanted to teach you this important part from the story. Learn from the mistakes that happens from your main characters and grow from them. So I am so excited to continue our search for theme. Now, for the month of March, we will be celebrating Women's History Month. So during this month, we will be reading about different young women in history who have changed the world in their own very special way. Now for this episode, we will be reading Malala's Magic Pencil by Malala Yousafzai, illustrated by Kira Skoet. I am so excited to share this story of this young woman with you. So I'm going to quit running my mouth. Are you guys ready to read? Well, then put on your reading hat and let's go. Malala's Magic Pencil by Malala Yousafzai, illustrated by Kira Skoet. Do you believe in magic? When I was younger, I used to watch a TV show about a boy who had a magic pencil. If he was hungry, he drew a bowl of curry and it appeared. And if he and his friends were in danger, he drew a police officer. The boy was a little hero, always protecting people who needed help. How I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it to put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me. Stop time so I could sleep an extra hour every morning. Erase the smell of rubbish dump near our house. And I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses in the world for my mother, the best buildings in the valley for my father so he could open many schools where children could study for free, a proper ball so my brothers and I no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish. Every night before I went to bed, I wished for a magic pencil of my own. Every morning I would wake up and check my cupboard, but the magic pencil was never there. One day I was throwing away potato peelings and eggshells at the dump. I was wriggling my nose, swatting away flies, and making sure I didn't step on anything dirty in my nice shoes when I saw a girl about my age sorting rubbish into piles. Nearby, boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on strings. When my father returned home from work, I told him what I'd seen. It made him sad. Abba, I said. Yes, Johnny, he said back. I always liked when he called me dear one. Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because... He said, but he didn't finish right away. Because, Johnny, in our country, not everyone sends their daughters to school. And some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favorite place, but I had never considered myself lucky to be able to go. My father had always said, Malala will live free as a bird. Now I wondered how free I'd truly be. That night I thought about the families who didn't have enough food and the girl who couldn't go to school and even about how when I was older I would be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from many girls weren't allowed to become what they dream of. I knew then that if I had a magic pencil, I would use it to draw a better world, a peaceful world. 
First, I would erase war, poverty, and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day. I wanted to be one of the top students in my class. But soon powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. They walked the streets of our city now. They carried weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Johnny. How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought, they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and traveled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that dangerous men tried to silence me, but they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever. Louder because people have joined me and together we make a chorus, standing up for what we believe. We raise our voices for those in need, help people in danger, even if they are an ocean away. Think of the world as a family. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world was reading my story. Millions now know it and help me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One child, one teacher, one book and one pen can change the world. The end. What a phenomenal story. First off, I love Malala. She is so incredibly brave. I admire her strength at such a young age. And she inspires me to always do what is right. And that brings us straight to our theme. Now, before I get ahead of myself, what do you think the theme was of Malala's magic pencil? Well, for me, the theme is no matter what, no matter the danger, no matter the struggle, no matter how hard it is, always fight for what is right and believe in your dreams. Malala was a young girl in a country where women didn't have so much of a voice but she still used hers to stand up for what is right, to fight against the evil around her, and to try to make the world a better place. And that is amazing and brave. I want to thank Malala again for gifting us this amazing story and encouraging us with this wonderful theme to always stand up for what is right. I am so excited I got to share this book with you. Please remember Monday on the Keys Kids channel Instagram, you'll find our next book in the Women's History Month. And then on Saturday, right here on the Keys Kids channel YouTube, you'll find me reading to you. Please don't forget to go like, subscribe, and share with everyone you know. Don't forget to leave a comment below. What do you want to do to change the world? Other than that, guys, it's time to go. 
But no worries, because I'm going to see you guys next week on the Keys Kids channel. Bye!